I don't know about you folks, but I am feeling very stressed out with my life lately. It just seems so chaotic. I'm balancing three different coaching jobs, three different locations, and in LA, you know, traffic can be a nightmare. I have my online training program and I have the podcast, and I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes I don't deal with my stress in the most healthy manner. That's why I am so excited about today's guest. I know her from CrossFit. Her name is Alice Toyonaga, and she is co-owner of Moto Yoga LA. They have several different locations, and they specialize in hot yoga. I'm hoping that she's going to be able to enlighten me on ways that hot yoga could maybe help relieve a little bit of my stress, because Lord knows I need it. Today is Thursday, July 25th. My name is JR, and you are listening to Podcast Handstand. Welcome to the show, Alice. It's so nice to have you here. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for having me. As I was telling everybody earlier, we have a lot of stress in our life. I have a lot of stress and I've been dealing with it slowly but surely over the last couple months, coming to the realization that maybe I don't have superhuman ability to withstand a lot of stress. It's been getting to me a lot lately. So I'm hoping today you're going to be able to give us a little insight on how yoga and the other services that you provide at your studio could provide a healthy output, an outlet for us dealing with stress. I'll try my very best. So before we get started, why don't we talk about your studio? Tell us the service that you provide at Moto Yoga LA. At, um, it took me a long time to actually get into yoga. Like a lot of people think like, oh, you're a yogi. And it's like, that must be everything that you love. But actually, um, when I first got into it, it was actually as a byproduct of running because running was something that I fell with, uh, fell in love with first. And uh, when you start to increase distances, as you know, um, things start to get really tight and it hurts. And I was just looking for some kind of compliment and cross training. And that's how I started um, my yoga journey, but in particular, my hot yoga journey, because um, an athlete's tight muscles in the yes. hot room, uh, it's a really nice combination. And yoga is interesting because I remember my very first ever hot yoga class and I was side eyeing the teacher everywhere <laughs> they went because it was like the longest hour of my life. And yeah. I was not, I wouldn't even say that I was particularly tight, but it was just like, I was like, I just really don't want to do this. This is not, this is not my cup of tea. But what I find really interesting, and this goes with a lot of different, I think, um, sports or different movement modalities that we do is it's kind of like peeling an onion. It's like there's layers and layers and yes. you start to discover about yourself. Yeah. Well, even more so with yoga, because I think a big part of the resistance to it originally was that it's so not what we do in society. Society, especially I was living in Toronto at the time, so huge, huge bustling city. Uh, values, productivity, and go, go, go. Yes. And then all of a sudden, I'm being put in this space where I'm being told, slow down. So kept going, though, because it was when I would not go that I would realize like, hey, yeah, I'm crankier, yeah. or I'm not as patient, or I'm not standing as tall. And it wasn't just me noticing, it was people around me. So I kept going at it, but very, very much like the peeling back of an onion. That's when I realized over time, oh, it's not just a workout. Like You can absolutely do that. We are in a Western culture that value. It's like, okay, yoga asana, which is a yoga class, yoga practice is going to be a physical, you know, workout. Sure. That's one aspect of it. But over time I started to realize like, oh, it's actually making me a better person, a calmer person yeah. and all the rest of it. And it's in those aha moments that I decided that opening a studio was so important to me because like, it, it's such a, it's like, as you know, we're in a society that is so stressful. I mean, that's what you opened with, right? And um, it's it's like there's so many different industries out there where we're like not necessarily making the world a better place, mm -hmm. <laughs> like advertising, no offense to advertisers, sure. but like there's certain things which is like bombarding us with more of the value of productivity and all that kind of stuff. And so to actually be able to offer people a place where they come and literally try to unplug. Mm -hmm. It's so difficult to, it's not like you're ever going to get to a red light, but at least offer a yellow light so that we can, um, I feel like kind of regulate all the things that dysregulate on it on the daily. So like our arrogance meter and our ego meter and all those different things. And it was in those, it was in those moments of clarity that I was like opening a studio and being able to offer that to other people is so, so important. Um, and so that's what I did when I came to LA, I, um, 
uh, co-founded and I'm one of the co-owners of Moto Yoga LA, specifically in Echo Park. We also opened Venice Studio, but it's closed down since then. And what I love so much about those communities is that um, we just happen to do really good hot yoga. That's what we say. We just happen to do that. We're also a place where people can come and be themselves and feel like they have uh, the freedom to explore what it's like to both fly and fall um, and like with, as, like with no judgment and also a huge sense of community. So before we go on any further, would you, this might even be an oxymoron of a question. Do you consider yourself a yogi? And if so, can you describe what's a really good definition of yogi? Because I feel like that word put some people off. I love that question so much because even when you started to ask it, I got like, oh, can I say that I'm a yogi? Do I have imposter syndrome? <laughs> I always joke because I always joke because like, you know, somebody who sees me at the CrossFit gym or uh, out on the trails, they might be like, wow, she's a really flexible or really mobile CrossFitter or runner. But then at the yoga studio, I'm like the really tight yoga. Really? <laughs> you know, I'm like, yeah, because it's not the one thing that I do, the yoga asana, like the actual practice of the yoga postures every single day. But am I a yogi in terms of, at the end of the day, am I linking movement with breath? Am I taking the time to sit down with myself and get comfortable in the uncomfortable of my own thoughts and who I am? Yes. Am I taking the time to look at um, different ways to find like a deep, deep internal healing, like meditation and breath work? So all of those things, all of those things are part of the yoga world. Um, and I really do think that you don't, you don't have to call yourself a yogi if that makes you uncomfortable. Sure. Um, and you absolutely can, even if you like don't step into a studio, you could still call yourself that. Okay. I think that it's, it's that accessible and that welcoming. I love that. All right. Well, talk to us about the things that you offer at your studios. I know that we've been talking about the cold plunge, I think is a new addition to your program. <laughs> Tell us the things that we could find at your business. Right. So basically, um, from um, 5.45 in the morning until like nine at night, you can come and take some hot yoga classes. And we've got everything for um, for different types of bodies. And so I find that if somebody's coming in, they're like, hey, I'm a really tight athlete. Um, like I... <laughs> Actually, I get a lot of people who say, I don't think I should come in because I'm too tight. And that always makes me laugh. There's like this saying that I love, which is like saying you're too tight to do yoga is like saying you're too dirty to take a shower. Like, yeah. no, you, you got yeah. to start somewhere. Right. Um, so we do have some classes that are more restorative or that get more into connective tissue or where we hold poses for longer that are tremendous for athletes. And in some cases, I actually find it's almost easier to teach an athlete's body because an athlete's coming at it from a place of stability. Mm -hmm. And then we're like, that's a great place to start sure. from. And then we get the mobility within that. We also offer um, some classes that are more fast paced. They, they link one movement, one breath, more vinyasa, more flow classes. And um, those can really be beautiful way also to just really feel embodied, um, to not have to feel so much about the alignment, even though alignment is still important, but really literally go with the flow. We offer some more athletic classes in the hot room. Like one of them is a core flow. And we're about to introduce this hip Pilates class, which really is about bringing um, more stability for our yogis that are regulars, but also the people who are coming in maybe with an athletic background who are looking to challenge themselves in a different way. So all of that gets done in a room that's 100 degrees. We, um, we like it hot. Yeah. Like I'm in the hot room all the time. And um, it's where, you know, we always say it's a way to find access, peace and breath under adversity. And the adversity in that particular setting is the 100 degree room. Um, so the first time it was ever mentioned to me to try cold plunging or contrast therapy, I was like, there's no way. Like I, I live in a hundred degrees. Yes. Like I'm pretty averse to the cold. Uh, but the first time I ever did it, I realized like, like such an aha moment of like, somebody was there to guide me, but I hold the key inside me sure. for the exact same thing we do in that hot room, yes. which is finding your breath and accessing peace under adversity. It just happens to be, you know, like 63 degrees difference between the two. Right. And so the more I started to do it, the more I started to see how we're linking a lot of the same things, a lot of the same principles. It does involve a lot of breath work as well as what we're offering in the hot room. So we just did a really soft launch for the summer and we're excited to expand on it in the fall. Um, but we have uh, people after class who get all of our sessions right now are guided by someone. So people can finish their hundred degree 
um, 60 or 75 minute yoga class, go take a little rinse off and then find three minutes um, of just themselves and their breath. And I think for people, especially people who are used to a certain stimul stimulus, like whether it's yoga, by the time you get into the cold, it really cuts away anything else. Like there's nothing you can do, but be present sure. because it's, it's such a fight or flight. And it's so, it's such an unusual stimulus for us. And so for me, it's been such a cool way to witness people transforming themselves in ways that they didn't think they were capable of. Yes. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been really cool. Tell me some of the reactions of folks when they're getting in for the first time. I know when I first did it, it was very alarming, but I wasn't coming from a hot room. So it's more of a contrast coming from that heated room into the cold plunge. So tell me, like, what do you normally see when people get in for the first time or the third time? Right. I feel like every time. It's cold, no, <laughs> yes. right? It's cold every single time you come yeah. in. Yeah, it's interesting though because it's definitely like sometimes if I come in right after class, I'm like, ooh, it's actually it feels way colder because of that contrast. Sure. But you're also craving, like you've been in that hot room for so long, you're craving the cool, and so sometimes mentally it, that also helps. It assists you in the cold, but like. We've seen everything. We definitely encourage people to not feel like they have to hold back because we don't know how we're going to react once we're in there and we're different any given day. But I've had like, we've had everything from laughter to anger to tears to oh, sounding like you're in labor. Yes. Like really, it's the whole gamut. <laughs> well, I was thinking that for somebody who might be seeking some kind of stress relief, maybe they're coming to a hot yoga, they come in. Do you see like a lot of emotions just being let go in the heated room? Mm -hmm. I like to joke because so in the heated room, you you don't know sweat until you've been in the right. in that hot room, and but it's so nice like we, we and we're all in the same boat. But I was like, what's nice is once we start to sweat, no one can really tell what when the tears yeah. hit. Like it's like what's tears? Yes. What's sweat? It's all the same. Um. You know, yeah, I've definitely had those moments in class uh, where where people feel that permission, right? Like like that permission to let go and to feel. Um, and we also get it a lot anecdotally, like um, people who started to practice and and just themselves, just like the practice, started to peel away at the at the onion layers of themselves. And we've had people um, just over the years, because the first one in LA, the first Moto Yoga LA, opened in 2011. So we've had people over the years be like, like you know, you changed my life. You transformed yeah. my life. You like, because of you, I got married because of you, I got divorced. Like <laughs> so many, so many huge, like life changing things happen, but it's because you get to the mat and even the times that are super stressful where you are crawling out of your own skin, you start to learn that with a little bit of time with your breath and with your grounding that you can trust yourself. And that's so powerful. Yes. Um, and sometimes it's like, we don't even, so, you know, I've had people leave class and be like, Oh, my mind is still, you know, jumbly or it's still like a monkey mind. Things are still moving around. And I'm like, of course, because we're humans, right? It's not about showing up there and being all peaceful and not thinking that's not, that's not realistic. Um, but imagine it's like when we start, when, even when we leave class and we still have that jumbly mind, we're continuing to process. And I always like to, to tell someone, like, if we hadn't processed that, it would be stuck, stuck inside our cells. And then usually it comes out like when people leave the studio, it's like you, ha you have no idea the ripple that the practice continues to have off of your mat, both to lovers and strangers, to people in the world. And the world needs more of that ripple of peace and softening. Sure. And so every time we don't step onto the mat, I'm like, we we risk then rippling off of our non-mat. We risk rippling off a lot of the things that we are holding onto that are that that are of disservice to us as a as a society. So do you find that people come to you because they're using yoga as uh, maybe a form of therapy? Over time, certainly. I don't know that a lot of people would necessarily start that way. I feel like a lot of people do start with like, oh, it's going to be exercise. Okay. And very quickly, do they start to realize that, yeah, it is, it's definitely a form of their own, their own healing yes. and therapy. Um, and you can have a lot of those different outlets. Like um, for me, for example, in CrossFit, I like to, like a lot of people are like, what do you mean you're you're present in CrossFit more than yoga? Yeah. And I'm like, because sometimes on my mat, it's it's a stimulus that I know so well that it's easy for me to start to check out. But if I'm holding an overhead squat, I cannot yes. check out. Yes. Like the stakes are really high. Um, or somebody who's out 
running trails in nature. Like, you know, there, there's different medicines out there that are going to provide therapy for you. So it's just, for me, it's, it's when people start to find that it's a different tool in your tool belt to help you find and access that calmer mind. Well, you had touched on it earlier, but what are some other things that people will then come back and say, because of yoga, I now feel like I can do this better or this is improving. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of what we see is people don't realize how much um, how much calmer and more peaceful they can be, and then how that ripples into their sleep. Um, you know, sometimes people might even, you know, we don't really, we don't approach it from like a bikini season yes, or weight loss exactly. kind of way, but we've had people do, we've certainly had people have huge physical transformations. And what they also maybe not realize is it's not just the physical activity, though that's huge. It's also like actually reducing your overall internal stress and your cortisol levels and, and that changing fundamentally. We've had people, this goes also for the cold plunge, but talk about how less achy they are, like how it's reduced chronic inflammation that they have. Yes. And and also like when, you know, a lot of the types of classes that we offer, um, and this is something that I really want for all the sports that I'm involved with is that it's something that we do for the longevity. Like I want to be doing this three, four decades from now. Right? right. And so we have people coming in who feel more balanced in their body, literally like balancing on one foot, feeling like they're more stable. They have more core stability. They're standing taller. Our spine, like in society, we're driving all the time. We're on computers. Yeah. Like all of that is actually aging us faster. Um, so it's really cool to see all those little things that people kind of realize. And I feel like they realize it if they hold their membership or they have to go on vacation or something happens and they come back and they're like, that's what I need yeah. all of this for. That's mm -hmm. amazing. So you had mentioned earlier that yeah. um, when you started yoga, you had been coming from a running background. So what initially mm -hmm. prompted you to say, hey, I, I need to take this yoga class? Yeah, it's a good question. So if I rewind even from the running, even before that, like I've always been pretty, um, pretty, you know, I've had a lot of stamina pretty much my whole life. I've always known that. But the stamina doesn't always get used um, in the best of ways. And so it was 20 years ago, actually. This is my 20th anniversary of health. In 2004, I was working 80-hour weeks. I was just running myself into the ground. And I was over 220 pounds. Wow. And I was like, you know, at, at that point, I'd gone to the doctors. And she just said, like, you're, you know, the, the way things are looking, you're heading towards having a stroke before the age of 30. Wow. And I just remember like it was just such an aha moment for me. I had no idea. I didn't see myself that way sure. because I actually felt pretty vibrant and I had a lot of energy, but I was putting it in the wrong place. I wasn't taking care of myself. And that very day, I was like, I don't want to be a statistic. And so I started movement. And then from movement, it was one thing at a time sure. from movement. Then I started to look at nutrition. And when I found running, running didn't come naturally to me, but it was something that I was like, we can all do it. We can, sh like, I wanted to also prove, like, you don't have to be a certain body type to be a runner. Right. Um, it'll help if you want to be an elite, but you can do it with the right training. And um, over time, like, with my very first yoga class, it was kind of like, okay, I don't want to have all of these injuries. And I, you know, I feel like I could probably do it. Yeah. Like, you know, there's, you know, I, I maybe not, I don't look like I belong on the cover of Yoga International right. magazine, but maybe I can do it. And, um, and that took a while too, actually. I'm, I'm not going to lie. And same when I got into the CrossFit for the first time, I never felt like I found my niche of where I feel like, oh, you look the type. And what I realized more and more is that there is no, there such, is no thing. such type. You can That's be right. there too. There is no such no. thing, right? And it's really up to us to get out of our own way and to, um, yeah, to, to, to bring it into your body and bring it into yourself in a way that is medicine and not poison. So I see a lot of people, you know, come into the class and push themselves into a place where, or into a pose <laughs> that I'm like, if that doesn't feel good for you, don't make it your poison. Like we should always, always be making the choices for ourselves that make it our medicine. Um, so that very, very first ever class was me kind of like being like, it's like a little bit of a, who cares, right? Like who cares if I'm not like the stereotypical person who might be coming to this class. And, um, I really just want to feel better in my yoga, in my, in my running body. Um, and I think there was actually a long time between that very first class and the second class, because, um, 
for people who have tried yoga before and they're just like, it is not for me. I say, try again. Like not only do, does every studio kind of like how every gym, yeah, every yeah. studio is going to have a different vibe and every other teacher is going to have a different vibe. And it's about finding your person and in the end, your community. And when you finally find that place that feels like home, you know it. Yes. I feel like you have to also be ready to let yourself go in a way. I, I have not been to that point before when I've taken yoga. I've gone and I, I've i kind of attacked it as if I'm in a competition. Oh, I'm going to hold this pose longer than the person next to me. My arm's going to be straighter. I was putting myself in positions and holding them probably past where I should have been. And I would always get major cramps and I had to stand up. But I was, I was attacking versus releasing and allowing myself to just see and do. And I absolutely wasn't present with myself because I was too worried about what everybody else looked like and trying to be better than them. I feel like now I'm in a place where I'm really looking for something that can help manage my stress because for the first time mm -hmm. in my life, it's been at an all time high. And I feel like I need to come try your yoga. Well, two things. First of all, yes, you definitely need to come and try my yoga. But all, but also, I mean, don't make yourself wrong for the version of you that was there in the competitive mindset, because that was part of your onion peeling, right? And so maybe realizing that you took a big gap and you didn't go, and then you're going to get back into it, having peeled your own layers of the onion elsewhere. But we also have people who do come into the space like that. And, and I'm not going to make them wrong either. It's like, okay, are they getting something out of it? Are they maybe calmer afterwards? Are they, um, you know, over time then realizing that, oh, they don't have to be in the front row because the front row is not available that day. So they try yeah. a new spot and then they have this huge revolutionary moment afterwards being like, hey, the back felt really good. And yeah. it was nice to not have to focus so much on my reflection. Um, yeah, it's all, we all have such a unique journey, right? So I was like, I, I always think that giving ourselves the grace for wherever we came from before, even if it means like a try, try again, yeah. is like the best thing that it's probably the most yoga thing you can do when it comes to yoga. I love that. Okay. So if we're talking about the benefits of yoga, I mean, you've already said them, but this could be the difference in someone who does CrossFit, who has a tighter body. I mean, the benefits of yoga it complements so many other things that we do. So talk to us a couple about mm -hmm. a couple of the things that you would normally tell new customers, hey, like they're coming in, they're asking, what is yoga gonna do? My this an this answer I probably would have answered so differently when I first got into yoga in two thousand and seven. But even now, um I, I tend to not want to give people that answer okay. because we have so many different reasons and so many different benefits of why we might want to get to the mat. But the, the biggest ones um, include um, detoxification, especially, especially in this with the sweat because our skin is our largest organ, but also through the breath. Um, as a society, learning to breathe deeper is just so key to our stress levels. And so definitely that's something we are looking to do. And at the same time, I tell them, I'm like, those, for, like, give it three to five classes, especially in the heat. We're getting used to not just yoga and doing poses for 60 minutes and slowing down, but we're also getting used to the heat. And so it's about this idea of repetition. And with repetition, then you're not, you start to move out of the thinking and you can start to move into more of the being. And it's when we start to get, get more into the being that we're actually more present. And we start to see that outside in other areas of our lives, like when we're talking to our partners or um, the patients that we have when our kids are yelling or whatever it might be. Um, but a big part of it that maybe like people don't think like, well, this is what I'm going to come in because I want to come in and burn some calories or do whatever it is that um, I think I'm going to benefit from it, like be more flexible, is that it translates into every single thing that you do in life. Because what happens on the mat is when we don't have, we don't allow our phone, phones in the room, for example, there's no distraction. And so our minds are really good at finding distraction. And so we'll start to notice, we start to fix our clothing, fix our hair, look in the mirror, um, wipe the sweat off. We want to do all these things that brings us out of our body. Yeah, the busy work. But there's only so much busy work to do in there. And when you take that away, I think people feel very 
naked. <laughs> like there's a vulnerability to that, but that is probably the thing that we most need as a, a society is to actually like simplify. And when I keep talking about slow things down for a lot of people, that's actually really scary. It's so scary. Because it's slowing down. Oh my gosh. It's yeah. so scary because that's when we, we hear everything and we see everything. Um, so to me, that's like one of the greatest benefits. And if I feel like the person in front of me kind of can receive that in the moment, I, I will tell them that. I was like, you know, it's like some of the classes that are really slow and restorative. I'm like, those might be easier physically, but they're going to be a lot more challenging mentally. And I prepare them for that. I want to know them to know what to expect because that is like, that's a huge muscle to flex is this idea of, is, is like how to retrain our brains. Okay, two things that hit me as you're speaking. Well, three things, actually. Your voice is so calming. I'm just like getting more relaxed as you're speaking. And normally when we're, we're speaking, we're in a gym. It's very loud. So I haven't actually been able to appreciate like the tone of your voice. So it's amazing. <laughs> um, but like one, I appreciate the fact that you said how breathing is so important to controlling our stress level. As I began therapy, one of the biggest things that I'm working on is my breathing and self-talk, you know, mm -hmm. finding a word or phrase that makes me happy in a moment where I'm starting to feel stress and just putting my hand on my chest and breathing nice and slow. But that's helped me so much. And it really does align with being alone with my thoughts in that moment, because in the past, that's been very scary for me to allow myself to absorb everything that's in my mind and even just coming to terms with things that I'm thinking or you know reality so I love the fact that you say yoga can help reinforce this because so many people just don't take the time to breathe and stop and it's helped me in CrossFit so much like when I'm doing workouts I've actually noticed a huge improvement in my output because I do have an internal voice that will tell me, why am I doing this? This hurts. Just stop. Take a rest here. But as I get to that point, I'm able to take a moment to breathe and give myself talk. And it, it has propelled me to be able to improve a, a lot of what I have been able to do lately. And so I love it. Well, thank you for sharing that because so really what you've just revealed is that you're a yogi. <laughs> Because, so there's a few things in what you said. The first is like, yeah, like, a, you know, the, self, the words, like the self-talk. In the ancient practices of yoga, that's a mantra. A mantra is something that you repeat to yourself over and over again. And, and it, it allows your cells to start to believe that ultimately. Yes. It is, it's a retraining tool for your brain. But what I love what you said about just taking a breath, just taking a breath. Like what I said before, yoga is transferable to anything else that you do, whether you're taking it um, under the barbell and you're taking it for running, you're taking it um, onto a reformer machine. My gosh, the reformer machine of the Pilates studio is my, my arch nemesis <laughs> these days because it's so hard. But if you're taking it home, wherever you take it, a breath is what changes something from a reaction to a response. Oh, that's so good. And that's what I ask my students to do all the time on the mat. I'm like, am I going to stop thinking? No, we're not going to stop thinking. But if we could just have a little ellipsis, a little dot, dot, dot between thought one and thought two, that gives us a chance to respond to something rather than react. And if that translates so well, I think the mental, I used to, when I used to do marathons, I was like, my mental game was so strong because I was meeting myself over and over again. It was just like being on the yoga mat. And we need that in CrossFit. But imagine we all did that in our relationships where we just took that moment, that beat before we responded yes. to the snarky thing that the partner yes. said. That's a response, not a reaction, right? And so you, my friend, are a yogi. Ah, uh, I love it. Thank you so much. <laughs> You know, I have, I've really been just looking for different things, different ways that can help manage my stress. You know, I find that the more I talk about it with people, one, it's been like a blessing because I found more people experience stress, anxiety, fear, more so than I've ever thought in the past. And because this is a newer experience for me, I have been really surprised and also just like very supportive to the people like you who I talked to about it. And I think things like yoga, working out, running, you know, like you're a big uh, 
a trail runner or you do like hikes and nature? What is it that you love to do most? Well, I, I can now say again, I don't want to say I have imposter syndrome. I, uh, in the height of my running, I say I'm retired from marathons, okay. but it's the half marathon distance. Like road racing, I do that all the time. But um, in in the past year or so, I've started. Now I do. Um, I, I go out to the trails for two to three hours every Sunday, and I run, and it's my therapy. I love it. It is so beautiful. It's it's a whole different way of running. It has nothing to do with your pace or your time. It's literally it's scaling up and making your way back down and redefining that for myself. And, and, and at the same time, it's all the same things. It's having my grounding and having my breath and being embodied. Um, yeah, it's, it's like, we all have our different ways that are, that we're going to find that de-stress and that the way that we fill our cups, and it's not going to be just one thing ever that works. It's about having access to all these different things in your tool belt, um, that make a difference. And, you know, I think a few times you and I have talked about this idea of focusing on the journey over the destination. Sure. And I feel like that can be a little bit harder in certain things like with, with running. It's like, well, no, this is my A goal. This is what I want to cross the finish line right. in or in CrossFit. It's like, well, that's my PR. That's the one, it's a number. It's so quantitative mm -hmm. and it's not to make that wrong, but it's that there's so much more to us right. in our day to day than that one very thing. And that is one of the things that I really love about the yoga mat is that as we as we do anything, as we change, as we live our lives, as our bodies change, we can't really look at that destination. There's no de destination. That's why we call it a yoga practice. We are in constant practice. So when I think of journey over destination, I think of like the destination is a snapshot in time. What if you blinked sure. during that photo? Yeah. Right? It's like, okay, maybe that photo is ruined, but it doesn't take away all of the living and all of the learning that happened to get to that snapshot. And that's something that I love so much about yoga. It's like, okay, maybe you took a really awesome arm balancing pose. And if somebody was to take that photo in that moment, that would be a snapshot moment. But that's also not the destination. In each class, the destination is Shavasana. It's lying down. <laughs> it's adult napping. No, it's like, it's yeah. actually lying down and finding yeah. yourself um, in stillness there. And so that's one of the things I've gotten to appreciate so much more is that we're, it's, always us in that state of living and learning in that constant practice. And if we can take that elsewhere as well, it can really change our, our mindset and our mentality. When you run, do you have complete silence or do you like to listen to music? So I, uh, I run with a friend. So we just talk about everything yeah. except running. So we are like each other's therapist. But then of course, if we were to meet at a bar or something, we would only talk about running. That's how it works. That's the, That's the, the logic. Um, yeah. But if um, there's been a few weeks that I've been running um, alone and on the road, I would always put music on and on the trails, I've stopped doing that. Um, partially, I realize that if there's rustling at my feet and there might be a snake, I want to know. Yeah. But actually, it's like, it's really beautiful to start to hear the footfall and the labored breathing with all of the nature sounds like it really it keeps me so dialed in to staying present so um i've been leaving my headphones behind. i love that i used to run a lot of marathons as well and i would love the times when it was later in the evening and no music one you know you need to be more aware of mm. people that are around you and might be behind you but just the pitter patter of feet it's just there's something so calming about it like just like that rhythm yeah and i don't know if you've ever trained with running groups or yeah. like with with a bigger group but that was something that i loved and 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 i can also i can relate pretty much every anything back to yoga but that was something that i loved it's just like the pitter patter of feet plural with other yes. people because we all have our different gates and whatnot but it sounds like it sounds like a soft marching band yeah, in yeah. a way it gives you this whole sense of aliveness and i used to think this in running all the time which is like and when I used to coach running as well, it's like you, maybe it's like, I couldn't have done it without my marathon clinic or the people that I ran with. I'm like, but you, that's true. Maybe we were there to support you. But at the end of the day, it's your own two feet right. that got you to the finish line. And, and so when you're in a yoga class, it doesn't literally nobody else is looking at what you're doing. Right. right. So even if you think your arm is straight, like you might be worried about what other people are thinking, but no one else is because everyone's too concerned about what they're doing, right. first of all. <laughs> and we don't even want them to be concerned about that. But as much as we're doing the thing on the small mat underneath us that measures what, like three by six feet or whatever it is, um, 
we get through it because there's a collective heartbeat and a collective breath to the room. And whether we really realize it or not, like, you know, we're, we, we need that connection more so now in the world. Um, even if we are feeling more stress and more anxiety and want to um, silo off, we also know that part of that medicine for us is connection with other people. Yes. I love that so much. Mm -hmm. All right. So what does Alice have coming up? Well, let's see here. I mean, I'm really excited because um, with the studios and with the cold plunges, just really getting to see all the different types of healing, I have started to put myself back into different healing modalities myself. So I have dusted off um, Reiki and started to do Reiki again, which is like a, an energy, Japanese energy practice that I used to do. Um, I'm getting into sound healing as well, which is amazing. Um, some somatic healing and I'm putting it all together. I actually um, started a coaching program for people who um, just want a little bit more of a nudge and accountability towards their own transformations. Yes. And also like, you know, believing that, you know, a lot of what I did, like when I did my first yoga class was believing that something that is impossible is actually I'm possible. And so for people who like, that's what I want to do. I want to, I created a program to help people turn their impossibles into I'm possibles. And so that's where I'm going to be putting a lot of my energy and focus in the coming months. That's great. And you have a clinic coming up, uh, running slash yoga clinic or an event coming up. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, we do these. We we just did one um, at our La Brea studio last month. We have another one coming up at our Echo Park studio at the end of the month. The one that's coming at, at the end of August. The one at the end of August, it's nice, it's free. And what we do is we, we go on a little two to three mile shakeout run from the studio. And then we all get together in the hot room and we'll do a special class designed for runners by runners. So it's not just the stretching, which we need, but it's also the strengthening that we need. Um, and it also allows people who might not, necessarily feel like getting to the mat is something that's natural to them to do it in a place where everyone else is kind of on the same boat. We're more comfortable in our running shoes. So now let's take our running shoes off and get on our mats together. That so that like next one's going to be on August 25th. Awesome. It's so much fun. Awesome. It's great. I'm going to have yeah. to come to that. Yes. Yeah. And then to have you there. final question, if you could go back in time and tell a young Alice, maybe a 10 year old Alice, something Oh boy. You know, this is something that even 43-year-old Alice is telling herself. But if I could go back to 10-year-old Alice who always had these big um these big dreams and these ambitions and would kind of like start these little projects is that is to fully trust herself. Fully trust herself that there's no linear path to success and and to and it's, this is journey over de the destination but to enjoy the hiccups along the way and to enjoy the little what might seem like setbacks um because you'll still get there. You're going to get there 10-year-old Alice and you're going to get there 42-year-old Alice. So trusting in that in that journey and that it looks different for all of us. I love that. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Thank you for having me. Thank you for um, sharing of yourself as a yogi. And uh, I hope I'm going to see you on the mat soon. Yes. Well, before we go, tell everybody how they can find you. Absolutely. So on Instagram and on TikTok, it's Alice Toyonaga Wellness. And um, in terms of the studios, we are at Moto Yoga LA. And you can find us both on La Brea, 3rd and La Brea near the Grove in LA, or on the east side in Echo Park. And um, we also have an online fully virtual studio, if that's something that the out-of-towners want to do. That's so awesome. I didn't know this. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I will <laughs> link all of those um, to the show notes so everybody listening can find you. Thank you so much, Alice. Thank you so much. Such an honor. Oh, thank you. And everybody, if you like the show, please make sure that you rate and subscribe, leave your comments, and share the clips. And until next time, we will see you then.